Tom Hanks. Oh, Tom Cruise, that'd be weird. Tom Hanks is like the father the, of America, right? They said on Saturday night, he's like, like the guy that would play the father of everybody. What were some of your earliest interests that led you to pursue a career in film? Um, you know, I've always been interested in film as an exhibition part of it. I mean, as a patron of film. I've never really been behind the camera. Um, I enjoy watching films with people and experiencing them with people. And I remember even as early as, you know, the early 80s, late 70s, my dad coming home with a VHS and showing us Star Wars. And that was a, you know, something my family always did together. So that was probably pretty formable for me is to watch films with my family together. Um, and then my background is really in, ex uh, is in event management and logistics. So working in film exhibition is basically a bunch of events. So managing those, it, all those led into my current career. Sure. You were a columnist for Slug Magazine for 16 years. Can you talk about the importance of telling stories of artists, local and nationally? You know, I love that Slug Magazine stands for Salt Lake Underground. Um, there are so many Utah stories. In fact, we even have an art, a magazine called Utah Stories, right? Like, um, print media is an amazing avenue to tell and capture those stories that, um, that maybe aren't big enough or haven't gotten out there enough to, to warrant maybe film. But it was, it was fun being kind of a beat writer, having a monthly column, getting to meet all the gallery stroll owner, or the gallery owners and people that were participating in gallery strolls. So yeah, it was, it's an excellent community there. It's a hearty group of people that um, are really passionate about the arts and gallery stroll every third Friday of the month in Salt Lake City, every first Friday in Park City. So. Yeah, I mean, get out there and check it out. Amazing Utah artists and amazing international artists that come to Utah to show. Now you're working for the Utah Film Center. What does the Film Center contribute to film in Utah? That's a good question, because we have a lot of things that we do for the community in Utah. Um, I'll start with our curated film program. There are free films that we show at the library and at the Rose Wagner. Um, library, free Tuesdays, so you know, there's cheap Tuesdays. We actually have free Tuesdays. Um, so this, at the Salt Lake City Library at 7 o'clock. Then the monthly screening with KBR called Through My Lens is held at the Rose Wagner. And that is a more in-depth look. We have Doug Fabrizio from Radio West do an interview with um, the filmmaker. Um, and then outside of those two flagship curated film programs, we do a media education program that travels around the state and teaches kids media literacy. We think that you know if this generation is going to grow up on YouTube and watching things that are not necessarily curated, it's just whatever content is up there. Um, it drives me nuts to watch YouTube because there's no master sound mixing and, and it just flutters around too much and maybe that's showing my age, but I'd like the younger generation to also understand what the artistic excellence needs to look like and, and what's expected to go from a YouTube show to a feature film. So we do a little bit of that. Um, we also show kids the animation process with um, professional animators that come into the classroom and give a lecture on all the jobs and um, details that go into making an animation. Um, we teach teachers how to bring filmmaking into their classroom. So if they want to learn how to instruct the kids on making films, editing films, and then that classroom management of how do you then uh, grade on those films, how do you upload them to a big file. That The kids know how to make the films. If they own a phone nowadays, they know how to make a film. But um, on the teachers are less comfortable with it. And so we try and help them integrate it into their classroom instruction and tie it to core stuff. Um, so that's the media education program. And then we have the Artist Foundry, which was a, a brainchild of a graduate from one of our local universities that found that after he no longer had access to the university and college um, equipment and that kind of community, he felt a little just on his own and lost. And while you're waiting to get into, you know, on productions, on set, 
who can you be working with, talking to, workshopping things with? And so we, he created something called Avrik Art House, which the Film Center has since taken over and renamed the Artist Foundry. So a little bit of legacy behind that, but it's um, a thriving film community. There's 16 productions currently going on. There's a lot of people doing post-production stuff there. Um, it's not a studio like the Utah Film Studios. It's just a co-working space some editing bays, you know, just a nice place to come and bounce ideas off of and fill community. So we're hoping to, to continue to build that community there and invite everyone to come down. Your current role for the Film Center is the Director of External Relations. What does your job entail? Being the Director of External Relations means that all the face-to-face -face, um, community outreach, marketing, fundraising, um, general rabble-rousing cheerleading kind of is a bit of my job. With my experience with logistics in previous positions, um, it's, I, I do a, a lot of overseeing how these programs are all gonna pull together and then be given out to the public. So hopefully your end user experience, um, my team helped put together to create for you. You are also a member of the MPAU board. Can you tell us what role the MPAU plays in the state? So I just joined the MPAU board. Um, I don't think I've been there a full year yet. Uh, my job is I'm the I'm outreach coordinator, which means that all of the members of the MPAU should be hearing from me, seeing me, um, learning a little, little bit more about what the MPAU does. And then I wanna learn from them what they'd like the MPAU to do. I mean, the MPAU is a collective voice Specifically for the legislature, you know, we do advocate for the motion picture incentive program, but we're also a community of like-minded people. We need to know what is the film industry doing, what could we do be doing better, and, and be a sounding board for that, you know, like where we can all vet ideas out to each other, but also any issues we have and make that collective voice happen. In your opinion, why is film so big in Utah? working on this for a few years trying to wrap my head around it because there's so many amazing film industry people here in Utah and whether they're in the exhibition, the film you know, making creation, the distribution, um, the schools that are all here, um, there's really an energy around film in Utah. I mean Sundance is here because of it but also it, I mean they, they help create it and keep it going but it was here before Sundance. It's, you know, we go back to spaghetti westerns from Kanab, Utah. Um, we recently showed the Union Pacific film. And just to, to, there's history here, a rich history. So tried to figure out how to articulate that history um, to people that are wondering about why film is so big here in Utah. And um, there's a pipeline that you can kind of see that we inspire film through our landscapes. And we inspire capturing those on film and photography. And we have schools that, that teach kids how to do this. We have everything from our education programs in elementary school, it's where the film center is helping in this pipeline of filmmaking creation is what I call it. Um, so it's the you know, media education from early on, then we bring Spy Hop in. Uh, they take them high school level. We have the School of Performing Arts that does that too, East Hollywood High. I mean, there's so many programs you then go to college, amazing universities and, and, and undergraduate programs available. A lot of do-it-yourself or things like the Artist Foundry that you can get involved in. Um, from there, you know, there's, there's PA certification programs through the Film Commission. You know, there's a lot of internship programs. So I think that it's not just what the Film Center does or what the MPAU does or what the Film Commission does. It's how we all work together to kind of take somebody from, you know, taking a beautiful photo in Southern Utah all the way through working on, you know, a live set here at the studio or anywhere in one of our beautiful landscapes. Your husband Derek is also in the industry. Derek works for the Utah Film Commission. How similar are your jobs? You know, I tell people it's the Utah Film Center and the Utah Film Commission. And it, we should probably get into sumo suits and battle it out so people realize there are two different names. Um, but. In the meantime, I explain it as that he does um, film production, um, you know, are advocating for film production and, and recruiting, soliciting for film production. And we do film exhibition, media, literacy, and artist support services. 
So, but yes, they overlap all the time. Our organizations work together again. They're all part of that pipeline. So we end up at meetings together, um, you know, uh, events all the time together. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's kind of fun because we both love film and it's also like you're never off the clock. Looking forward a few years from now, where would you like to see yourself and the film industry in Utah? I, I would be great. I'd be happy to be right where I am in a few years. I want the industry to be a bit different in the few years. I want it to be funded more. I want uh, the legislature to understand the value of the film incentive, how it relates to how we're viewed on a national and international level. And I want to see that pipeline really solidified more. I want there to be a level of communication between all of our film industry professionals on how we can do bigger and better things when we're working together. Mm -hmm.